It's 1991. I'm 17 years old. And like many young people that age, I'm thinking, what should I study at university? What should I do with the rest of my life? Now, back then, I was completely infatuated with computer games. Whether it was Pitfall on the neighbor's Atari, or horoscope skiing on my beloved ZX Spectrum 48K. I was hooked. Now, even before these dizzying technological heights, myself and a group of friends once purchased a computer magazine full of pages of code, which we painstakingly typed into the school's BBC Model B micro, every break, lunchtime, and after school, until the teacher forced us to go home. Finally, after two weeks, we press run. And it didn't work. Two months debugging and fixing the thing later, we pressed run again. And this time, we entered the world of the philosopher's quest, a land where you could go north, get key, open chest, and even use key to open chest. Now, back in 1991, one of my friends had bought something amazing a dial-up modem. Remember those? And you could use this thing to access something called the internet. <laughs> now, there was no graphics. It was slow. It was expensive. Nobody else could use the phone in the house when you're on it. But you were connected to the world. Even if that was only 42 people back in 1991, <laughs> nevertheless, it was the world. And I thought, this was incredible. I remember thinking, this is going to change everything. It's going to replace encyclopedias, libraries, vinyl records, not to mention totally transforming shopping, gaming, software, and media. The potential was limitless. I decided right there and then that I was going to study computer science at university and become part of the internet revolution. So, I went to my dad, and I said, Dad, I'm going to study computer science at university and become part of the internet revolution. My father looked me straight in the eye. Son, this internet thing, it's not going to catch on. <laughs> There's no future in computers. You need to get a proper job, like engineering. There'll always be a job for an engineer. And so, off I went to university to study engineering. And over the following years, as the internet revolution unfolded around me, I thought to myself, the next time a macro transformative technology that's going to fundamentally disrupt multiple industries, democratize access to resources, and accelerate the rate of innovation and change comes around again, I'm not going to miss the boat twice. 30 years later, on the 30th of November, 2022, OpenAI launched ChatGPT enabling hundreds of millions of people to access the transformative power of generative AI. A technology so powerful that Facebook, Amazon, and Google have invested billions to catch up. Elon Musk wanted all development suspended, and Italy initially banned it outright. Generative AI, or generative artificial intelligence, is a technology that rather than going off and searching through data to find your answer, it can generate its own response when prompted. It's a bit like asking someone who's read all the books in the library a question, as opposed to sending them off to the library to look something up for you and bring the book back. Many have predicted that generative AI will be more impactful than the internet. Think of all the change that's happened in our lives since the internet. Back in 1991, we had phone directories, 
paper maps, magazines. Today, my son doesn't know what a phone directory is. He is only eight. He thinks a paper map is something that pirates use to find treasure. <laughs> and when I told him I used to type in pages of code from a magazine into my computer, he looked me in the eye and said, Dad, what's a magazine? <laughs> now, the internet today is still basically the same technology as it was back in 1991. But the reason it took so long to spread and fulfill its potential is because it had to rely on modem purchases, newspapers, and word of mouth. Fast forward to 2023, and it's a completely different universe. Generative AI doesn't need you to purchase any hardware. It doesn't rely on journalistic interest or word of mouth to spread. It's instantly accessible on the very smartphones that billions already own. So unlike the internet, which had to wait for society to catch up, generative AI is ready here and now, disseminating at the speed of a viral tweet or TikTok video. And that means the time that we have to understand, adapt, and potentially steer this new technology is not stretched out over a leisurely three decades. I predict we have three to six years. The CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, used two contrasting examples to highlight the sweeping impact of generative AI. Renowned coder Andrej Karapathy experienced an 80% increase in his coding productivity, all the way through to a rural farmer in India using AI to access government funding. This is not just a technological revolution. It's a social and cultural tidal wave, and it's breaking much faster than the internet wave that preceded it. It demands that we ask not just how will this technology affect us in the future, but how is this technology affecting us right now? How will history remember this moment? Co-founder of OpenAI, Sam Altman, said, if you think you understand the impact of AI, you do not understand and have yet to be further instructed. He went on to say that history will most likely remember that chat GPT moment. That moment back in early 2023 when the world went generative AI crazy. Rather than seeing this as just a moment, an unprecedented moment, personally, I prefer to see this as a challenge. A call to action. The chat GPT challenge. Disrupt or be disrupted. It's a challenge for our governments, our institutions, businesses. But ultimately, it's a challenge for individuals. Individuals like you and me. It throws down the gauntlet to each and every one of us. Disrupt or be disrupted. My ChatGPT challenge came in early 2023. Picture me alone in my room. It's 2 a.m., cocooned in the artificial light of my device, meandering through Twitter, avoiding some work I need to get done the next day, finally surrendering to those chat GPT posts, persistently peppering my feed. Six hours and many YouTube videos later, I felt a powerful sense of deja vu. It was that 1991 feeling all over again, the calm before the technological storm. And as the sun rose, it felt like it stretched out a radiant arm across those 30 years, gently tapping me on the shoulder whispering in my ear, don't miss the boat twice. This time, I wasn't going to ask my father. I was going to back 
my own judgment. My ChatGPT challenge brought me here to this moment. Right here, right now. Where will your ChatGPT challenge take you? Okay, I know what you're thinking. What's the worst that can happen if I just ignore this? Well, I believe it will find you. It will disrupt you. If you haven't felt this in your organization yet, it's because so far there isn't an AI-powered contemporary with superior products and services. If you haven't felt this in your job yet, it's because so far your boss hasn't realized how AI could transform your role. If you haven't felt this in your personal life yet, it's because so far nobody's used AI to create an impersonator, imposter of you, and used it to try and scam your grandparents. Okay, so I can't ignore this. But what can I do about it? If Sam Altman and Satya Nadella don't know how this is going to pan out, what hope have I? Well, there is a theory called effectuation theory, developed by Saras Sarasvathy. And it gives us a powerful metaphor for how we can embrace change in unpredictable and turbulent times by focusing on what we can control. At its heart is the metaphor of a pilot in a plane flying into the storm. The plane is at the mercy of the storm, and the pilot knows this. Rather than trying to control the storm, the pilot focuses on what they can control, the throttle under their palm, the altitude of the plane, bringing a calming presence to the crew and passengers. And as we face this chat GPT challenge, we are like the pilot in the plane flying into the storm. You are like the pilot in the plane flying into the storm. What can you control? Accept the change. Learn and grow. Yes, this is going to be a leap into the unknown. Yes, you won't know where you're going to end up. We can't control the future. But the truth is, AI is here right now, and it's not going to go away. And once you accept that truth and make it your purpose to learn, explore, and find out more, you'll be setting out on an adventure. The ChatGPT challenge, in essence, is an adventure, an exciting adventure I urge you to embrace. No, I implore you to embrace. You can control those first steps. But as for the ending, well, it wouldn't be an adventure if you knew the ending.